So have you ever been talking to someone and you just wanted to say, grow up? Yeah, I figured you had, I have too. And the Bible talks a lot about growing up about growing in the maturity in our faith and living in unity. So I'll let you go get your journal and whatever you studied with, and I'll come back in just a moment and we'll talk about unity. I'm Monica Schmelter. I'm so glad that you could join me for Bridges today. We're gonna to be talking about really growing up maturing in our faith and living in unity. And as we do that, we're going to be looking into the book of Ephesians chapter four. So if you've got your Bible, you can uh, study along with me. I'm gonna read from the English Standard Version today. And I'm gonna start there with Ephesians 4, 1, where the apostle Paul says, I therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you've been called with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body one and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God the Father who is over all and through all and in all. So those just couple of verses there are not only a mouthful to say, but are a lot for our hearts to comprehend. First, Paul says, I urge you. So in other words, that means, hey guys, church at Ephesus, this is important. And even as we read his words today, it's important. He's urging us to walk in a manner that's worthy of our calling. And I want to say this, of course, this, that calling can apply to leadership and pastors and deacons and all of that. But we are all called to the ministry of reconciliation, to be sharing our faith. In fact, the word of God says that every last one of us that know Christ, we are all living epistles known and read by all. So it's not like, well, you know, for me to say, well, I'm not a pastor, so that doesn't apply to me. Or, you know, I'm a mechanic, so that doesn't apply to me. This is every believer in Christ. Paul is appealing to, and he's saying, walk worthy of the calling that you've been given. He talks about being humble and being gentle. Uh, he talks about with patience, bearing with one another in love. Love really does cover a multitude of sins. We are commanded in scripture, all different books of the Bible really command us and require us to love one another, to be tenderhearted, to be forgiving. These are traits of the Christian believer. And the more that we spend time in God's word and we obey and more time in his presence and together with other like-minded believers, the more that we grow in that love. And then he says, be eager, be eager. He says, let me read it exactly here. He says, be eager to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. And so it's important to say, because you know, we talk a lot about unity and I think conceptually most believers understand how important that unity is. What's harder is that in real life, in practical life, in a fallen world where things break, where people have strong disagreeing opinions, um, it's harder to understand to be eager about keeping the spirit of unity in the bond of peace. And the bond of peace is not talking about just uh, keeping the peace at all cost, or just sweeping things under the rug, or ignoring the white elephant or whatever color the elephant is in the room. It's not about living in denial, but it's about acknowledging how great and how wonderful that our heavenly father is, that he sent Christ, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, that out of the value and out of all the goodness that he's given to us, that we refuse to be petty and divisive, and that we understand that if the world's gonna know 
that we're his disciples by our love for one another, because that's what the Bible says, that then we're eager to maintain that unity, to say, you know what? I don't go to that church down the street and perhaps that's not the worship music that I like or I, I like a more liturgical service or this one likes a more rambunctious, energetic, enthusiastic service that we can say as our grown up selves in Christ, I can see past all of that. What's important is that we believe the Bible. What's important is that we believe that we cannot compromise the word of God to suit the culture of today or the tastes of today or the appetites of today or whatever to fit in or to conform. This scripture is not even talking about conformity. It's talking about unity that's provided through God the same Jesus Christ, the same way for all of us to get saved, to be born again with a grown up understanding that we're never going to understand it all right here on planet Earth. Some people call it keeping the main thing, the main thing. And so that is what's important, that a Christian believer, right, believes that Jesus Christ is the only way to God the Father, that he died on a cross, that his shed blood provides forgiveness for our sins for all who will accept him, that he was resurrected to new life by the power of God, and that he says whoever, whoever will come to him, that he will accept, he will never cast out. So we're looking today in the book of Ephesians, and we are talking about unity, and unity is a theme in this fourth chapter that we're in that we will see come up again and again in this chapter. And so what Paul is saying to the church in Ephesus, and this rings true even today is, you guys, let's come together in unity, in the bond of peace, because Jesus is our peace. So as long as the main thing is the main thing, like we're not telling people that, well, we can rewrite scripture now to say what we want it to say, because there are world religions that are still doing that. They still have their prophets, and if that prophet has a dream or an unction, then the whole way of that religion can change. We don't have that in Christianity. We have the Bible. The Bible has been canonized. These are the Holy Scriptures. They are God-breathed by the power of the Holy Spirit, and they are good to encourage us, to instruct us, to rebuke us, to correct us. So we have the full revelation of God in His Son, Christ Jesus, in the book that we call the Bible, and we're called to grow up and to mature in our faith. And as we continue in Ephesians 4, if you'll skip down with me there to verse 11, it says, and he gave, and this of course is speaking of, of God, he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for the building up the body of Christ until we all attain the unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to mature manhood to the measure of the full stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro and by the waves and carried about every wind of doctrine by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes, rather speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up into every way until the head, into who is the head, which is Christ, from whom the whole body is joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped. When each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. So truth number one for today is we are all called as Christians to grow up, mature in faith and live in unity. So unity, is not a man-made idea, and it cannot be accomplished by our own man-made plans or schemes or any of that. We cannot live in unity without the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit filling us up as we renew our minds daily in His Word of truth. So Paul outlines here, look, God gave some to be apostles, 
pastors, teachers, the idea of those roles, of those ministry gifts is to build the body of Christ up into maturity. In other words, so that we grow up, so that we quit acting like selfish children who take temper tantrums anytime something doesn't go our way. And that we have the idea that the louder we scream, right, the more that it will make this go away. And yet we can fall into this trap. I mean, just full disclosure here, I've certainly had a few Monica meltdowns in my life. I've certainly made things that are really small things or petty things. I've made them out to be bigger than what they need to be. We can either look at all of the things that divide us, or we can look at the greatness and the all supremacy of, su supremacy of Jesus Christ who unites us. And so Ephesians 4 is saying, be eager to maintain the spirit of unity in the bond of peace. You all, we've been called to peace. There are other scriptures in the Bible, in the book of Peter, where it says, seek peace and pursue it. And I'll include those other scriptures in the online extras when you go to the website, monicaschmelter.com, so that you can see the notes, the scriptures from today, and some of the parallel or the corresponding scriptures. We have to understand that unity is God's idea. And he doesn't just save us to save us. There is this idea, this picture, it is outlined all over the Bible where it says, grow up. Sometimes there are passages of scripture that says, you know, you should be on uh, meat right now, but you're still on milk. Like you haven't come very far in your faith. And let's not let that be said of any of us, but let's decide if we haven't before today, then like today, right now, you know what? I want to grow up. I want to mature in my faith. I want to live in unity. I want what God says that he wants us to do. I exchange my selfish ways for who he is. And then I understand that belonging to a community of faith, belonging to the body of Christ has great value. And that the whole idea is that these ministry gifts, what we call the fivefold ministry, build us up in the faith and equip us and when it says works of ministry, it's not just working in a church or going out and speaking at places or writing a Christian book. In fact, most of it is not that. For a lot of us, our ministry is at a cubicle in an office somewhere. And the woman at the well is the, the woman that sits next to us or the woman that we meet at the water cooler or wherever. We ministry means service. We are all called to serve with a servant's heart. And unity is a part of our service. We should look for, right? Seek peace and pursue it. So every last one of us that named the name of Jesus, part of our calling, part of what is being asked of us is to grow up, to mature in our faith and to live in unity. And there's no other way to grow up except to really make the word of God our first priority, to agree with whatever he says. And as we're reading it, whatever's there that doesn't belong there, that we're willing to get out of our lives. That's how we grow up. If you think about a baby, an infant, right? The idea is the parents do everything at first. If loving parents don't feed, clothe, diaper, bathe the baby, the baby can't do anything on his or her own. And you've ever noticed, if you just see a baby, just how happy everybody gets. I mean, this new life, this cute, wonderful, handsome, precious bundle of joy. They are so cute and so wonderful that even when they keep us up all night long, we just love them anyway. But the whole idea there, right, is that as this child grows, the child's behavior changes. Naturally, a child begins as soon as she or he is able to wanna to feed themselves, to wanna to speak for themselves. So the baby stage is absolutely wonderful, except when you have to tote the diaper bag here, there, and everywhere. That part's a little hard, but as they grow up, we don't have to take all the things. 
the child becomes more responsible for themselves. And that's what the kid wants. There's sometimes even, you know, when they get in the toddler stage, you wanna help them get dressed because they're really not able to do all the zippers and the buttons, but, right, their independent self wants to do that because they want to learn that that's, uh, that's what babies, that's what growing up is about. And in our faith, it's the same way. So when we're new in the faith, Everybody takes care of everything for us. And as we learn more and as we grow, we then not naturally, but supernaturally want to take on more responsibility to mature in our faith, to be able to share Christ in different ways and to know that more is required of us, that we grow stronger in the fruit of the spirit in all the different areas. So growing up and maturing in our faith and living in unity is our reasonable service as a believer in Christ. I want to also in Ephesians 4 start at verse 17 as Paul continues. He says, now this I say and testify in the Lord that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. They are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardness of heart. They have become callous and have given themselves up to sensu sensuality, greedy to, greedy to practice every kind of impurity. But this is not the way that you learned Christ, assuming that you heard about him and were taught in him as the truth is in Jesus. To put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life, and is corrupt through deceitful desires and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds and to put on the new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. So again, all kinds of truth there in those scriptures about this new life that we are called to in Christ. Paul says, there are those who their hearts are hardened. They're not open to the gospel. And we know people that are like that, hardened hearts. We can pray for them, but nothing that we can do about that. That's a, that's a supernatural work as we pray that God will woo and will bring others to him. But what we are responsible for is to say, you know what though, I want to mature in my faith, that I want to put off my old self which belonged to my former life. And I want to be clothed in the newness of Christ and in the fruit of the spirit. And I want to be growing. That is all a part of growing up, maturing in faith. Truth number two is out with the old and put on the new. That is something that we will all be doing until Jesus Christ returns for us. We hopefully will all be growing, maturing in our faith, seeking more and more unity because this is the will of God. And to walk in unity, we have to get rid of the old, the selfishness, the demand to always be right, right? All of the things, the, the, the person that wants to point out the flaws, all of those things, having a short temper, being angry, um, not, not the kind of anger where something productive is happening. I'm talking about destructive anger where we've crossed over into sin. We're to get rid of all of the old. And if you think about it, uh, probably just a week and a half or so ago, I decided to take on the daunting task of reorganizing my closet. So in my closet, what I try to do is keep everything organized Long sleeves are with long sleeves. Short sleeves are with short sleeves. I organize everything by color. And my best of intentions, but then over time, right, something gets put back in the wrong spot or this group of hangers gets too tight and all these clothes are all squished in there. And I look in there and it just looks uncomfortable to look at. But sometimes it's such a big task, like I put that off because I just think eh, that's going to take two whole days. I don't have that time. So I just decided this last time, I'll just do what I, a little bit every day, I'll do what I can. But it was kind of this out with the old. I had to look in there at pieces that, in, you know, and sometimes I have an issue with letting go. Like, well, I haven't worn that in a long time, but maybe I would wear it again. 
I just needed to get rid of it. I just needed to give it to someone who might appreciate it if it's in good condition and, and still in style. But what happens is you kind of, as you get rid of the old, it made more room for new. It made the closet look better. I can find things much easier now. So when you read the scripture in Ephesians 4, it's not like a horrible task. I mean, while it is some work, and while it does take leaning into Christ and obeying his word, getting rid of the old will yield great benefit and value to your life. You'll get rid of like being a hothead, get rid of being a gossip and being petty, and instead being clothed in the righteousness of Christ, having love and joy and peace and gentleness. Remember Ephesians 4, when Paul starts out, he says, walk worthy of the vocation with which you've been called. So look at your life and ask, gosh, is my anger like, is that really working for me? Am I walking in all lowliness and gentleness of heart or am I just telling people what to do? And I'm saying, well, that's just the truth and just have it. Because speaking the truth without love or speaking the truth without grace is just condemnation. None of us can bear up under that. If we could, God could have just given us the truth. But what did he do? He gave us the truth and he gave us love and he gave us mercy. It's by his kindness that we come to repentance. So we can't fix anybody else's life. We can pray for them. But what we can do is look at our life. I can look at my life and say, you know, I've got some old habits. I've got some works of the flesh that pop their heads up and I want to get rid of that. And just like my closet got better when I got rid of stuff that was old, stuff that didn't fit, stuff that I bought with, you know, it was on a great sale, but I really didn't like it. I just put it in the closet. I never really did anything with it. It made for a whole new closet for me. But what we're talking about here is much more important than a closet. It's your life. And the idea is that three months from today, I would be more mature than where I am right now. Not that three months from today, I'm struggling with all the same stuff, the anger, the this, the that, for all of us, that we are growing up, maturing in our faith, that we are walking in unity. And that part of that comes from that ongoing process of out with the old and put on the newness of life that comes in Christ. I will have all of this up on the online extras if you go to monicashmelter.com and all the scriptures that we talk about today. And I want you with me in Ephesians 4, just skip down with me if you would to verse 25 where it says there, therefore having put away falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbors for we are all members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil. Let the thief steal no longer, but rather let him labor doing honest work with his own hands so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. Let no corrupt talk come out of your mouths, but only such as good for building up as fits the occasion that it may give grace to all who hear and do not grieve the Holy Spirit by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. So truth number three for today is live your faith. I want to say this. If you just even took the scriptures here in Ephesians 4 from 25 to 31, and you wrote them down or parts of it in bullet points, like put away all falsehood, speak the truth in love, get rid of anger and malice, get rid of corrupt communication. And you took truth number two for today, out with the old, put on the new. And you just prayerfully before God said by your Holy Spirit, show me any of this old stuff that's going on in my life and as you show it to me, give me the courage and the desire to change. Give me the courage and the desire to be clothed with what's new. 
I don't know if you like to close shop or not, but I do. And I just really love a new outfit. There is something about new, right? And if you don't like clothes, it might be that it's a, a new piece of furniture, a new car, any, any new thing. We love new. And in Christ, we are made new. Ask God to help you eagerly desire the newness of life to eagerly desire unity where there's been anger and divisiveness and pettiness. We are called to live our faith. And those scriptures there from 25 to 31 is all about its practicality. It's living your faith. There are some profound theological truths in the book of Ephesians. There are also some really practical stuff that Paul outlines. So it's like me going in the closet, like whatever here is old and doesn't work out and looking at our life. What are my words like? What is my spirit like? What is my go-to when a crisis comes? You know, sometimes it's not always the right response on my part. Sometimes it's eat chocolate. Sometimes it's be mad, right? But we're talking about growing up, maturing in faith and living in unity. We're called to live our faith. This is not just a theological, a theological study or you just go to church to take notes and have a pretty journal. No, it's about that there's a difference in our behavior and with God's help, we can do that. That's why we're talking today about growing up, maturing in your faith and living in unity. Unity is a high call, but God has called us to it and whatever he calls us to, he makes a way for us to do that. Again, I will put all of this up on the online extras at monicaschmelter.com. Today's truth is the unity our hearts long for is found by living biblical truth in our everyday lives, just in the everyday routine, mundane, sometimes miraculous, but let's just be honest, some days are just lots and lots of laundry, cleaning and running errands, but we can live in unity even in those times. And the unity that our hearts are longing for can only be found by living out biblical truth in our everyday lives. So I encourage you today, pray for unity, live in unity so that we can bring God the glory that he desires and deserves and be a witness to others. I'm out of time, but I say goodbye and God bless you. If you wanna grow your faith and understand God's word more fully, then monicaschmelter.com might be just the place for you. You'll find all of Monica's teachings on demand, complete with online extras. Get started today, because truth changes everything. Join the Bridges community on Facebook. Visit Facebook and search for Bridges with Monica. We would love to connect with you. Don't miss another episode of Bridges. Subscribe to our YouTube channel today where you can find all of Monica's latest teachings. Just visit youtube.com, search Monica Schmelter, and click subscribe. Once subscribed, click the bell icon to get notified when a new episode is available. Thanks for watching Bridges.